In this lesson, we are going to start looking at how the code is built up for our synthesizer. Unfortunately, it is a little boring at first to cover the configuration setup, but necessary so you can follow along as we progress towards actually coding the microcontroller into a synthesizer. Let's go ahead and open up Atom. And of course, every time it opens, you have these extras that pop up. You can go ahead and close those. Now let's go ahead and open up a project we configured using the Cube MX IDE configuration tool. If you recall, I saved this in the workspace as BP Synth init. Press select folder. Up here in the left corner, we can see our folders for our project. Let's go ahead and open up Core. SRC for source and double click on main.c. This is our bare bones main.c that the ST Cube MX provided for us when we configured our microcontroller. Scroll down to about line 43 and you will see the three of these grouped together. I2S handle type def HI2S1, DMA handle type def HDMA SPY1 TX, and UART handle type def HUART2. These are structs with information for configuring the peripherals we will use inside our microcontroller. HI2S1 is the handle for the I2S1 peripheral in the BlackPills ST chip. It is essentially a variable name of a type def struct that is called I2S handle type def. This is where we configure the I2S interface. You can find the I2S handle type def type def struct inside of BP synth init drivers, STM32F4 HAL driver, INC, which means include, and then look for STM32F4 HAL I2S.h. Now, what we can do is just go ahead and split right and close this one and now we can see both of them. Over in the HAL I2S.h file we're going to scroll down until we find this one right here. I2S handle type def. Now this struct is a type def struct. In other words we start out saying type def. Type def is a struct and this is the struct. And at the end is an actual name of the struct, I2S handle type def. As you can see, this is the same as over here. At the top, to the right of this type def struct is what's called a tag. This tag is really just like a, a quick name that you can see right next to the word type def struct. But the format is, is to put the name, the actual name, down here at the very end. And a quick way to find the end is right after type def struct is this bracket. If you click next to that, you can see underneath it there is a line. Scroll down until you find another bracket with the line under it. That's the companion bracket, which would be the very end of this type def struct definition. Now inside this struct there are several members, which I like to call parameters. And what we basically have here is we have a template that we can reuse over and over. In this instance, we're going to make a copy of this and call it HI2S1. And inside, the values for all of these parameters will only be for the HI2S1 struct. So to try and make it clear, this is a type def struct. All of this is a type def struct. We don't really use this as a struct. What we do is we make a copy of it and call it a name like HI2S1. If you have never seen structs used before, it is crucial to read up on them in a link I will provide in the resources tab because we will be using them a lot. In a later lesson, I will explain structs in more detail. Looking back at our private variables in main.c, we have two more of these structs being declared. We have the DMA handle type def and the structs name is HDMA SPY TX, which is essentially DMA SPY1 transmit, 
and we have HUART2, which is the UART port number 2. Now the DMA handle type def struct is located in the drivers how DMA dot H. I'm going to open this up in a split right. I'll just go ahead and drag that over. Scroll down. And here it is. DMA handle type def. Looking at UART handle type def, again, we can find this in the drivers include STM32F4 HAL UART.H and we have to scroll down a bit before we reach UART handle type def. It's right here about line 141. Again, just like the others, it's a type def struct. Here's all the parameters inside of there. Here's the actual name, UART handle type def and we're going to make a copy of it and call it HUART2. So now that we've seen these structs and understand that we're making copies of the templates and giving them a name of their own, we can go down to the next section and take a look at some function prototypes like MX GPIO init, MX DMI init, MX I2S1 init, and MX USART2 UART init. Now these prototype functions are called within our first function that is ever called inside of our code. So what happens when we call main void is we do the HAL init, system clock config, and then we do those four that we just said, the MX, GPIO init, DMA init, I2S1 init, and HAL UART init. What these do is these go ahead and start the configuration of our peripherals. The actual functions are further on down. Here's MX I2S1 init. When this function is called, it begins to fill in the HI2S1 struct that we declared earlier up here, HI2S1. And we can see that struct over here, STM32F4 HAL I2S.H. Here's the I2S handle type def, and here is instance. So in the HI2S1 struct that we have created, the first parameter instance right here will be given a value that is inside the macro SPI1. This means this could be a value that points at a specific memory address. Now an interesting thing about instance right here is that spy type def is another struct. So what this is is a nested struct inside of a, another struct. So when we make HI2S1, we not only create the I2S handle type def struct, but we create this nested struct as well. And this instance is a pointer, which means a memory address. And most likely, SPI1 is the location of that memory address. Moving on, the next parameter is mode, but it is located in another struct called init. Now to see that struct, again it is a nested struct inside the I2S handle type def struct. This struct is called I2S init type def. So one's a handle type def and the other's an init type def. The I2S init type def is actually right up here. I2S init type def. And inside are more parameters. So here is where mode is found. So init mode I2S mode master transmit. That's the value we're going to put inside of this struct that's inside of this struct. Let's look at one more. We have init standard. So in the struct I2S init type def that we call init that's inside our HI2S1 struct, there is a parameter called standard. And we're going to give it the value of I2S standard Phillips, which again is a predetermined value. This is a macro. Hopefully most of this will make some sense. If it's not clear after reviewing it a few times, please don't be discouraged. 
This configuration data won't really get looked at again when we get into building code for our synthesizer beyond the point of getting our DMA stream started up. I would recommend to keep moving on in the lectures and the fog may lift later on when we discuss structs again. In the next lecture, we will look at the code used to generate the I2S data stream sent to the digital analog converter.